Hello and welcome back to my channel. My name is Dr. James Gill and you join me for another clinical skills video. Today we're going to be looking at the very simple or apparently so technique of percussion. We're going to use percussion in several clinical examinations, most um, clearly being the respiratory examination, but also in the abdominal examination, percussing out the spleen and the liver, and also on the cardiac examination, percussing over the lung fields, and finally also over the thyroid examination. So this is quite a significant um, technique for students uh, to be able to master. And in the first year, it's often a, uh, a, a technique that causes the most consternation when it seems that the lecturer or other clinician can walk up and simply rap on the patient's chest, producing a lovely resonant booming sound um, in a healthy chest. And then a student comes up and isn't able to replicate that. So we're going to go through in detail today how to optimize your percussion technique to get the maximum clinical information from your examinations. So with that in mind, for a respiratory examination, to percuss, you need to take your non-dominant hand and place it between the ribs on the patient's chest. So as mentioned, we want to um, percuss between the ribs like so, rather than directly over the ribs, as this will attenuate the sound. We can potentially percuss directly over the um, clavicle, but that will be the only area where we do such a thing. With our um, middle finger between the patient's ribs, we want to make sure that the distal and middle interphalangeal joints, your first bit and second bit on your finger, are flat against the skin. Placing your hand on the patient's skin, you want to press firmly and splay your fingers out, ideally having only the middle finger in contact with the patient's skin. And we're going to be percussing over our distal interphalangeal joint. We're then going to take either one or two fingers on our dominant hand and wrap down on our distal interphalangeal joint directly on the patient. And we want to strike with the fingertips rather than the pulp of the finger. We don't want to be using the pulp of our fingers as that will change from a nice percussive tapping sound to a less effective soggy slapping noise instead striking directly down in parallel to the fingertip. That's going to give us a transmission of the sound through the joint into the patient and back out. If we don't have our fingers flat, then you can see we get a very different attenuated sound. As well as using our fingertips to strike the distal phalanxes, we need to make sure we've got a good movement from the wrist. bouncing up and down like that of a drummer rather than using the whole arm to go up and down. Remembering the purpose of percussion is to take the sound from our fingers for it to enter the patient's tissues and be reflected back and the different reflections will give us an idea of what is going on in the patient. For example, over a normal chest field we'd expect to have a resonant noise as if we were percussing a small drum. If somebody perhaps had a pneumothorax, where you've got a collapsed lung, we'll have two different percussion notes. Over the area of collapse, where the lung has become consolidated, we'd expect a much duller note. So perhaps if we'd filled, for example, the drum with fluid. Conversely, the area where the lung has vacated because of the collapse, this area is going to be hyper-resonant, so it's going to sound like our larger drum. So, with what we've just learnt on how to correctly percuss over the patient's chest, let's put that into practice with a small clinical case. We see a patient who's complaining of a cough and a little bit of shortness of breath. And we have a look at the patient, and on their left side, they've got normal breath sounds, they've got normal uh, percussion and normal vocal resonance. Everything seems good over here. When we have a look over the right side of lung fields, things are a little bit different, though. As we go down, we go from normal percussion to a dullness in uh, about the lower one-third. 
And we notice over that same area, there's an increase in vocal resonance in that bass as well. What could be going on there? Well, let's look at the facts from it. So we've got increased vocal resonance. That normally indicates um, a consolidation or something allowing transmission of that sound vibration through. Also, we've got dullness here, and that normally goes along with a collapse, a consolidation, some fluid around that area, because the sound is not resonant, we're not getting that nice, normal, booming noise that we get when we percuss over the chest. Thus, in this patient, we're probably looking at pneumonia. Hopefully you can see where the percussion is coming in there to help us determine what's going on. Let's go for a, uh, another clinical case. So the patient again has come in with some shortness of breath, but also they've had a little bit of chest pain here. We percuss over the uh, right side of the chest and everything seems normal. On the left side of the chest, however, we notice that we've got a very increased percussion note over the left upper zones. And as we move down to the base, we find that we've got a decreased um, percussion there. Similarly, when we listen with uh, vocal resonance, we've got increased uh, vocal resonance at the base, but we've got a loss of vocal resonance at the top. What could be going on there? So here we've got a patient that has a pneumothorax. The lung has collapsed down. So here we've got a denser area of tissue now where the, uh, the oxygen and the air has come out of the lung because it's compressed down, leaving that dullness to percussion, as if we're percussing over uh, a balloon full of water. Higher up, in the space that's been vacated by that collapsed lung, we've got an increased sound, a hyper-resonance. So here that's percussing over the balloon with no water in at all. And because we've now got air in this area, we're not going to be able to transmit any tactile or vocal resonance, so that will be reduced. And as we've seen with our pneumonia, with the consolidation on the bottom, when we have the collapse and that compression of the lung in the pneumothorax in the bottom region, we're going to again get an increase in vocal resonance or um, tactile vocal fremitus, because that's acting to transmit the air, uh, transmit the uh, sound through that solid tissue. So just to consolidate this, percussion is something that you can practice at home. Again, take your non-dominant hand and place the middle finger between two ribs. Using the tips of your fingers, not the pulp, strike over your distal interphalange or joint, pressed firmly against the chest and you should hear a nice resonant note. If we compare that to the note you get using the finger pulp, it's not as deep. And you can check the difference between a resonant noise and a dull noise. So resonance should be in the upper zones or over the um, right lung fields. Whereas if you percuss directly over the heart, you're going to hear a much duller note because you've got well, the heart obscuring the lung, so we've not got that area um, filled with air in order to prov provide that resonant note. Well, I hope this has been helpful for yourself. If you'd like me to break down more of the actual clinical skills techniques, drop us a comment down below and we'll see what um, issues that we can help you out with. Take care, see you soon.